Hey guys, my name is Jared, and today we're going to be taking a look at my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K handheld rig. So I bought this camera a couple months ago, and I knew right from the beginning, hearing about the battery life and the cost of CFast cards, that I needed to rig this thing out big time. Now, I had a couple different options of what I needed right away to start help with battery life and helping get more to this camera, add some weight for some more steady handheld shots because I really like shooting mostly everything handheld. Now the first thing I really wanted to buy and I knew for myself that was the best thing to start with was a cage. Now I actually got this before I actually got the camera itself so it got me super excited before and to see how wide this camera was but I knew this was going to be a good starting point because I could build a whole rail system off of it, have battery at the back, handle up top. I knew I was going to have a good starting spot with this. And now this cage is super awesome because it's just a quick two screws that one in the top goes in and one in the bottom and then that's the beginning to your whole cinema setup. Now as I'm setting this up, I'm not going to go through what I bought in what order. I'm just gonna kinda go as building it as I usually would when I get to a shoot. And now the next thing for my rig is this rail block. I think it's a different name. Um, I'll put it right here of what I actually got. And this was super handy because it had two rail spots right there ready to go so I can start building out the rig from that. So I'm gonna throw that on next. Okay, so for the next part of this, I'm gonna grab the rails that go in here. I'm gonna put the small rig ones right here of good, not replacements, but another option. Mine were from a kit that I got here at the store in Henry's in Canada that we have. And I ended up just transferring from that kit over slowly to this. And I just used those rails because they work fine for me. And what I'm also gonna do right away is put this tripod plate on the bottom of the rail block right away. Okay, I got that on there. And now the next thing I'm gonna put on is my Metabones, not speed booster, just the adapter for Micro Four Thirds to Canon EF. Now I got this adapter rather than a speed booster just because I had, I bought two different ones right off the bat and they both had focusing issues, like they were not sharp at all. And both of them had issues communicating with the camera. So I ended up just getting the adapter, which is pretty cheap here in Canada. And now my go-to lens choice is the Sigma 18 to 35. Got it recently and have used it on basically every single shoot. And now some other things I'm gonna throw on here right away, some smaller ones. I got this right when I bought the camera as well. And that is to put here to make sure the HDMI and the USB-C don't come unplugged during a shoot because you don't want to lose any footage or just break a port because I've heard with like the Sony I'm shooting with, with a small little port and no protection, I found myself bumping into it a lot and it, I didn't want to break the camera. Also another small accessory I just got recently was this little hot shoe adapter and I put it on the other side of the camera because when you put the SSD in, it blocks the hot shoe that's on here. So I got this to put it over on this end so that I can still run a mic for scratch audio off of this rig. All right, now the next thing I have is this top handle. I got the one that you screw into the top and I ended up buying this one instead just because it's easier to screw on so I can set up my camera mostly without an Allen key. And this one is just a matter of screwing it on like this, which makes it much easier. Now the next thing I bought, which is probably the most important for this specific rig, is power adapter. Now I got this, I'll, again I'll put it right here of what the cost was and everything. This allows me to put one of these Sony MPF batteries on here, and this will power the camera. I think I go through two batteries in the whole day rather than if I use the stock Sony or Canon batteries here. Um, this lasts way, way longer than using any of those. Okay, next thing on the list, I have this Lilliput 
4K assist monitor. It's seven inches. Hindsight, I'm gonna buy a different one. This one works all right. It's not the brightest and it doesn't feel that sharp. I know this camera doesn't put out the best to an HDMI compared to the, say the Sony, which has to record from it, but it works for now. And with this handle, it's just an easy slide on. Maybe not so easy. And another great thing with this top handle is that now I can lock this into the hot shoe so it won't slide out, which the other handle that I got, which was a little cheaper, didn't do. So this is much nicer doing it this way. All right, now next thing I'm gonna grab the SSD and some cables and get that all finished up and put power to the camera. And then I think it's just about ready. Now for cables, I have the dummy LPE6 battery for the blind spot adapter, the Samsung T5 SSD, the USB-C to USB-C cable that came with it, and a, I think it's a foot and a half HDMI. All right, so yeah, this is my setup for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And now one thing I also have as well, I have this focusing system, but it's not the greatest, so I don't end up using it much, but I like to have it just in case. Again, this is one of those things that came with the kit I got from Henry's. And one thing it also came with was a cheap little plastic map box with a flag on top which I don't end up using much. I think I'll end up getting a legitimate matte box later on. And then for filters now, I ended up buying a bunch of different NDs. I got a Tiffin variable ND. Yeah, so I ended up getting the 77 millimeter Tiffin variable ND. Um, I had a, a cheaper one from Henry's here and it was terrible the color cast was so far green and once you got up to about five stops it was so bad and the weird x markings and everything it was just not a good experience so i ended up finding this used on amazon.ca for 90 dollars, which looking at the prices everywhere else was quite the steal and then just in case i wanted them I ended up buying some just fixed ND filters, these cheap ones from Newer. Um, these were like 16 bucks. Probably never gonna use them. If I ever need it for a second shot, for the other lens I have, I have two different sizes, so then I can have one on the Blackmagic and one on the Sony if I need two cameras for a shoot. And also, let me know in the comments if you wanna see a review of this Tiffin filter. I haven't seen too many of them when I was researching for it, but I think I want to do an in-depth look into this and yeah, let me know if you think that'd be something you'd be interested in. Now, thanks for checking out my video today. If you guys want to like and subscribe, that'd be awesome. I'm going to be trying to upload more and more content like this. And I'm also going to be doing some out in the field on shoots training type of stuff with real estate videos, corporate stuff and different gear reviews and things like that. As well, I'm gonna be doing some videos, some how-tos of different things with editing and workflow and organizing different projects and things like that. And if you guys wanna see those, stay tuned.